Okay, let's go. Ready? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's Board of Appeals hearing. Before we begin, let me introduce the members of town government that act, advi act as advisors to this board. To my left is Paul Hennings, the counsel to the board. To his left is David Flynn, assistant planning director. To his left is Tom O'Brien, a planner in the planning department. To his left is John Bondino, town building director. Now let me tell you why you're here tonight. New York State statute requires that any town that adopts zoning must also have a board of appeals to act as a relief valve so that, that those persons aggrieved by strict application of the zoning ordinance can seek relief without the expense of going to court. Town board can give board of appeals additional powers such as special exception approvals, site plan approvals, etc. In Smithtown, the town board has given this board authority regarding certificate of existing use and some special exception uses. The most common kind of application before us, the board, are area variances. Area de variances deal with dimensions such as lot area, frontage, height, setback, and parking spaces. New York State statute mandates that the board must consider the following five criteria in area variances. When you come to the podium to present your application, you need to address these five areas. They're posted here for you. <clears throat> Whether another desirable change will be reduced in the character neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created. Two, whether the applicant has feas other feasible alternatives. Number three, whether the variance is substantial. Number four, whether an adverse impact on the environment will be created. And number five, whether the alleged difficulty is self-created. The statute requires the board to balance the interests of the applicant of those and those of the neighborhood or community. This statute further requires that the board shall grant the <coughs> minimum variance it shall deem necessary and adequate, and at the same time, preserve and protect the character of the neighborhood and the health, safety, and welfare of the community. The board has the power to impose reasonable conditions for granting variances. Special exception applications are different than area variances. When we have a special exception application before us, I will explain the different criteria. <coughs> Regarding procedure, cases will be called in order that they are advertised. When your case is called, please come forward, submit your affidavits and mailing receipts to Mr. O'Brien, and you'll be sworn in the podium and given the opportunity to explain to the board why you need the variance. After the applicant is done speaking, all interested parties will be given one opportunity and only one opportunity to be heard. So please organize your thoughts, <coughs> keep your remarks factual that are related to the case. Then I will ask the applicant to come back to the podium to answer your concerns. The board will then close the case and reserve decision. After all the hearings are closed, the board will review cases and decide some of them. Others will be reviewed at a later date. There are three ways to find out the results of the case. Number one, you can wait until after the public hearing, but there's no guarantee the board will act on your case tonight. <clears throat> number two, you can call the planning department tomorrow afternoon. And number three, applicants can wait and be notified by mail. I do have adjournments, so let me just go through these adjournments. <clears throat> case 16773, Roseanne Gerhardt, is adjourned to November 27th. Anybody here for that case? <clears throat> case 16775, Francisco Zito, is adjourned to November 27th. Anyone for that case? <clears throat> case 16776, Miso, on 73 uh, Lillian Road, Wisconsin. That's adjourned to October 9th. <coughs> and one case 167812 J's Inc. Anyone to hear? That's adjourned to October 23rd. Okay. Okay. Mr. Flynn, will you read the cases for us, please? Okay. <coughs> The first case this evening is case 16,772, 
The applicant is WSI Properties, Inc. slash Globecom. 45 Oser Avenue, Hopog, New York. The location, south side of Oser Avenue, 1,124 feet east of Plant Avenue, Hopog. Property zoned LI. The request is a variance to increase the maximum height of an accessory structure from 18 feet to 47 feet for a proposed <coughs> satellite antenna. Good evening, Madam Chairman, members of the board. My name is. Take that mic and lift it, please. Perfect. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Chairman, and members of the board. Uh, my name is Eldon Smith, representing Globecom. Um, and your address, please. 12-1 uh, Technology Drive, Setauket, New York. Are you uh, president or vice president of the company? I'm the architect. Right. I have yeah. a power of attorney. All right. With you me. need to give it to the. Raise your right hand, please. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Want to tell us why you're here, please? Sure. Um, I'm here tonight requesting a variance from the Smithtown Zoning Code, Chapter 322, Article 9, regarding uh, maximum accessory structure height. Uh, we are requesting a variance uh, to increase our maximum height from the allow allowable 18 feet to uh, 46 and a half feet. Uh, I'll go through, I guess, the questions um, okay. regarding item number one, uh, whether this is an undesirable change or a detriment to adjacent properties. Uh, we feel that this is uh, non-detrimental to the adjacent properties. The area that we've cited for this antenna uh, is going in the existing satellite farm, which was previously uh, approved by the board uh, for this use. Um, there was previously also a same filing for the same location for a nine meter antenna that was previously approved. Uh, they now we have increased that from a nine meter antenna to 11 meter. Uh, we don't feel regarding item number two that there's a feasible, uh, feasible alternative um, to, to place this antenna. Um, is the variance substantial? Uh, regarding the height, I guess, you know, it is a substantial height. Uh, increase uh, considering it's a uh, light industrial use in the property uh, it's approximately uh, 530 feet uh, from Oser Avenue in the back area uh, adjacent to the existing satellite antennas uh, we feel it's not going to be uh, a problem within the area since it is all industrial there's no residential bordering this property uh, will this be an adverse impact on the environment uh, we don't feel there'll be any adverse imp detriment on the environment caused by this installation. Uh, and uh, number five, whether the alleged difficulty was self-created. Um, this is a matter of Globecom uh, doing some new business, trying to bring in some business, and this is a, uh, an antenna that should help grow their business and uh, bring in some additional revenues to the town. Thank you. Planning? Nothing. Thank you, Madam Chair. Gentlemen. No question. No question. I just have a question. Mm -hmm. Is this the same type of antenna as the others in the farm? Yes. It's that's just larger in circumference. Yeah, it's a 36-foot uh, diameter, 11 meters. Yeah. So very similar. They have an 11 meter in the field. They have a couple 9 meters existing already. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? <clears throat> Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. 
Is regularly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The second case, 16,773, is adjourned. Third is 16774, Vasco Holdings, LLC, 1920 Deer Park Avenue, Deer Park, New York. <coughs> Location, northeast corner of Middle Country Road and Sunny Road, St. James. Property zoned NB. Request variance to increase number of wall signs from a maximum of one to two. Permit a wall sign not facing a public street. Good evening, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board. Vincent Pizzulli with offices at 333 Earl Ovington <laughs> Boulevard, Uniondale for the applicant this evening. The subject property, uh, as you know, is, is improved with a small retail center. It was rezoned to neighborhood business a few years ago, uh, and it's, it's having a hard go of it. The application before you tonight is to permit a second wall sign not facing the public street. The circumstances giving rise to the need for the wall sign is location and visibility. Uh, the, the shopping center is a storefront close to Middle Country Road. This particular tenant is a pizza restaurant on the, uh, on the southeast corner of the building. As you're approaching this building and the restaurant and the shopping center from the east on the westbound lane of Middle Country Road, the, the wall sign on the front of the restaurant, which says St. James Pizza, is partially obscured by a street tree. Um, this second wall sign on the side of the building will allow this business, this business to be noticed a little bit easier and more conveniently. Um, so we ask your indulgence with that and, and ask you to permit a second wall sign. Um, I will add for the record that this board did approve a similar request for the Smart Mart store on the opposite corner of the building for the exact same problem um, uh, because of its location near the street. It needed additional visibility from the, west, from the eastbound lane. That's it, if the board has any questions. Lenny? We're uh, normally concerned about um, if the board grants this, other businesses um, wanting the same and then the cumulative effect being detrimental to the town. However, um, if what Mr. Pizzulli says is true and that the circumstances here are somewhat unique in that a tree is blocking the view of the, of the normally permitted sign, then it would seem uh, to make sense to grant it here and not everywhere. Thank you. Gentlemen? Okay. Thank you so much. <coughs> Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? <clears throat> hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Ready, move, and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. The third, uh, the fourth case, number 16775, is adjourned till November 27th. <coughs> the next case, 16776, is adjourned till October 9th. And the next case, 16777, uh, Richard and it says eight, I'm sorry, Richard, it looked like an, an and sign, but it's an eight. Richard Avignon, 8 Sybil Place, Smithtown, New York. Location, west, west side of Sybil Place, 239 feet north of Riviera Drive, Smithtown. Property zoned <coughs> R10. Request variance to reduce the minimum front yard setback from 40 feet to 29 feet for a proposed 198 square foot first floor addition. 33 square foot portico and 38 square foot deck. Also to reduce the side yard setback from 12 feet to two, two feet and the total side yards from 28 feet to 17 feet for an existing 329 square foot deck and proposed 38 square foot deck addition. May I have your name please? Good evening, my name is uh, Richard Avignon. And Avignon. your address? My address is 8 Civil Place, Smithtown, New York, 11787. <coughs> okay. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Would you like the gentleman to speak for you? Yes, I would. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. May I have your name and would you spell your last name? Uh, my name is John Cox, uh, C-O-X. 
My address is 20 Camp Drive in Selden, 1174. Okay. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. You want to tell us why you're here? Yeah, what we'd like to do is uh, we're requesting a, a, the minimum setback uh, that is 40 feet to be reduced to 29 because what we'd like to do is uh, we'd like to build a, an addition uh, for a family room in the front yard, a 198 square foot room uh, with a portico. Uh, if you look at the numbers there, you also see that it says reducing the minimum side of 12 to 2.9. <coughs> uh, that's really what it's talking about is an existing deck on the side of the house. Uh, the previous owner had got a variance, but it was wrong on the on the uh, survey. It was like, if you look at the note on the bottom, it talked about it was only uh, four. It's, it noticed that it was four feet off, so the variance was incorrect. So now they're trying to correct it because it's really only 2.9 feet off the variance. So while uh, the addition is not going to encroach on any of those numbers, it's going to be the side of the house. But uh, the front yard setback would have to be uh, reduced if we can go forward with this project. Mm -hmm. How did your neighbor feel? I mean, we visited the site. You were there. It's a very high deck. You know, it, so it is. Um, do they feel that, you know, you're imposing on their privacy? I'll let Mr. Abignone answer that question. Okay. Uh, not, not to my knowledge at all, no. I'm actually, it's, it's very, you know, very close. They never say a word about that. Mm -hmm. Planning? Um, we're concerned about the front yard setback. It's rather substantial. Um, and unless there are unusual circumstances, um, many variances might be granted like this. And uh, we think that that would undermine the uh, decision of the town board to require a 40 foot setback. Um, however, I think uh, you'll find in the file an aerial photograph, and it shows. Uh, the house to the south has a similar addition. Yes. However, uh, I don't think it goes as far, and I think it would be um, um, appropriate or fair to um, <coughs> grant this variance to the extent that the other person was granted. It would seem like to limit them more than these folks are limited would be unfair to them. And similarly, since they were granted something, and it, the lot appears to be about the same, mm -hmm. it would be unfair to these folks to limit them more than the neighbor. Do you know what they were limited to? I couldn't tell. Um, I didn't have ch time to pull the file. But if you look at the aerial, it's close somewhere. Tony has it. Tony. It, it, uh, it looks like it comes out close to the projection of this, but I don't think it comes out that far. May I comment for a second? Yes, you may. Uh, I'm doing a, uh, a similar project uh, a couple blocks away. Uh, this board, um, we, we made a 10 foot in the front. It was from 40 to, I believe it was 30 um, on Four Riviera Drive. And this board granted that in May of this year. Uh, it was very appreciated. But uh, so it's a similar structure to the, to the one we're building here, we would like to build. Is that the same? Um Character of neighborhood, the same area. Um, I, it's certainly the same uh, neighborhood. I don't know if uh, on Riviera it looks particularly different, or the lots are different from this. It's. I mean, it, I, I would submit that the fact that there's another one gives cause for concern about, like I was saying, undermining what the town board did in setting 40 right. feet as the requirement. Okay. Gentlemen, any other questions? Yeah, I just want to know how high is the deck? How high is the deck? 24. I think it's two feet from the, from the ground. Oh, thank you. <coughs> any other questions? No. Well, then. <coughs> Can I just make one uh, more remark? Yeah. Okay. Um, the house that was granted, the one on Riviera Drive, is actually the exact same house as far as um, uh, same type of house that we're, that we're um, asking for here, even though it's a different road. Um, but if you look at the property, I mean, it doesn't encroach on any of the neighbors. It's going to actually make it very beautiful. If you have the plans there, you'll see how it's going to really uh, enhance the neighborhood. Uh, you may feel that uh, it may be changing things a little bit, but it really doesn't 
protrude that much. It's going to really beautify the area and uh, make the value of the area more. Thank you. <coughs> okay. I'll entertain a motion to close. Is there any, first of all, is there anyone here that wants to be heard on this application? All right. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Really moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. The next case is 16,778. Scott Skinnell, uh, 16 Samuel Street, Wisconsin, New York. Location, south side of Samuel Street, 200 feet west of Quenzer Street, Wisconsin. Property zoned R15. The request is a variance to increase the permitted paving in the front yard from 25% to 85%. Another variance to increase the paving in the rear yard from 25% to 30%. A third variance to increase the maximum height of a fence in a front yard from 4 feet to 6 feet. Also to reduce the front yard setback from 45 <coughs> feet to one foot for a six foot fence. I presume it's the same fence. Reduce the front yard setback from 45 feet to 40 feet for a deck. Reduce the front yard setback from 45 feet to 35 feet for a 600 square foot pool. And to reduce the distance from any lot line from six feet to eight, eight feet. I'm sorry, I said that backwards. From eight feet to six feet for a 120 square foot barbecue counter. Good evening, Madam Chairwoman, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Smithtown. My name is Glenn Gruder. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Satilman Ballin. Our offices are at 100 Motor Parkway, Suite 156, Hopog, New York, 11788. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, Mr. Scott Scannell. There are seven variances before the board tonight. <laughs> What I'd like to do is discuss the variances and then I'll go to the, the five factors in, in the town law uh, to save a little time. Uh, I, I expect that everybody should have in front of them the survey of the property, which is uh, dated. Let me find the date here. Uh, let's see. It's May 18th, 2012, uh, prepared by Terrence Muskowski. Everybody has this survey, I hope? Uh, then I'm going to continue. Before I address the specific variances, there are two factors here which are the, the real reason uh, Mr. Scannell needs all these variances. The first factor, as you can see, is his lot is, although it's rectangular, which is a normally shaped lot for a residential lot, it's not, set, it's not sited correctly. Instead of being about 100 feet along Samuel Street and 200 feet back, he's got 205 feet along Samuel Street but the depth of the lot is only 95 feet. In this zone, the front yard setback is 45 feet, and the rear yard setback is 60 feet. To build any kind of house, obviously, he needs variances. So we have the depth of the lot being the number one consideration. The second consideration, which you can't tell from the survey, is the width of Samuel Street. It's an extremely narrow street. I don't know exactly what the dimensions are, but I'm going to say it's approximately 30 to 35 feet wide at best probably more like 30 feet. Because, in fact, we needed variances to build any kind of structure, uh, Mr. Scannell was before this board in 1995, and he got, in fact, a number of variances, including a front yard variance for the two-story wood frame residence, as well as a, a front yard variance to permit an accessory structure in the required front yard. With your permission, Madam Chairman, I'd like to bring this up. Yeah. Want to share this, please? Before Mr. Scannell purchased the lot, the only improvement on the lot was the structure, which is now denominated as the garage, which is located to the very east of the uh, property. In fact, that garage was originally constructed as a barn, uh, and it was used by the property owner to the south as a barn for, in fact, horses. Uh, when Mr. Scannell purchased the property, he needed the variances for his residence, and as you can see by the approval from 1995, he got those, uh, those granted, subject to the one condition that he had to reduce the size of the barn when he converted it to a garage, which in fact he did. Okay, as to the variances. Now, the first variance, excuse me, uh, 
the first variance we seek is to increase the maximum permitted paving in the required front yard from 25% to approximately 85%, uh, which is 25% uh, is, is the limit pursuant to Chapter 322, Section 12I8 of the Town Code of the Town of Smithtown. Now, I am not an architect nor am I an engineer, uh, but I do dispute that 85% of the front yard is, is covered with paving. Now, the paved service has a very broad definition in the town code. It could be cobblestone, it could be concrete, it could be asphalt, and there is a lot of asphalt here. But uh, I would submit for this board's consideration, it's probably more like 65 to 75%, but in any event, we do need the variance. The reason for the variance is as follows. Uh, Mr. Scannell is a family. His oldest son now drives, his wife drives. Samuel Street is an extremely very narrow street. He doesn't have a lot of depth to his property. Instead of putting the driveway parallel to the side of the house, he decided to put, in essence, the driveway parallel to the front of the house. So he, he enters from the west side and he exits from the east side, driving in front of the house. By doing so, he doesn't have to back up on the very, very narrow Samuel Street. In fact, and, and even though the 85% number is high, what I'd like to do is hand up a photograph to the board. It does show some landscaping in front of the house, trees and bushes. It's not as if the entire front yard is occupied. It's not. Uh, is it a driveway? It is. I'm not going to dispute it's a driveway. If you've been there, you've seen it. It's a driveway in the front, but it's not like it's just blacktop everywhere. Uh, the second variance. Uh, is to increase the maximum permitted paving in the required rear yard from 25% to, to approximately 30%. Uh, again, uh, there is a substantial grass area, uh, as you can see from the survey, but when you measure the rear yard, which in this zoning district is 60 feet, we, it is occupied by a patio block, it is occupied by the house, it is occupied by the pool, uh, as well as the garage. But for the most part, 70% uh, of the rear yard is not paved, and the variance there is only an additional 5%, which is obviously uh, not very substantial. Uh, the third variance is to increase the maximum allowable height of a fence in the front yard from 4 feet to 6 feet for approximately 165 linear uh, feet of fence. At this point, what I want to do is hand up two photographs uh, to the board. Uh, Mr. Scannell's fence is a white picket fence. It's solid for about five feet, and then it's uh, picket style with the poles for probably the top foot. Here are two photographs of the fence uh, for the board's consideration. But the critical aspect of these photographs, the critical element I would submit to the board of this variance, is that no part of the fence obstructs any neighbor for Mr. Scannell into or out of their driveways or their homes, all right? The, there is only one driveway adjacent, there, in fact, I'm sorry, there is no driveway adjacent to Mr. Scannell that is obstructed by that six-foot fence. In fact, his neighbor to the east is here and supports the application. And as you can see by <coughs> that photo, the fence is a beautiful fo uh, fence uh, and uh, it, it does not obstruct anything. In addition, Mr. Scannell re requests a six-foot fence for privacy. Because his lot is so shallow, he's basically improved the uh, west side of his property, I'm sorry, the east side of his property with most of the accessory structures that we would probably put in a rear yard, a deck and a pool. But to ensure privacy from Samuel Street, he's asking for a six foot fence. The next variant is to reduce the front yard setback from 45 feet to one foot for a six foot fence. Obviously, from 45 feet to, to a foot is a substantial variance, but I want to point out to the board that in 2010, when Mr. Scannell put his pool in, he was given a certificate of occupancy from the town for the pool with a six-foot high PVC fence to code. I'm going to hand up copies of the cards from the building department that show the certificate of occupancy issued for the pool and the fence. Thank you. 
look at this? I want to share this? The board should also please bear in mind that in 1995, we've already established the front yard setback of, in essence, 30 <coughs> feet, because in 1995, to build a house, we needed a front yard setback from 45 to 30 feet. The pool is no closer to the front yard than the house. The next variance, which is for the deck from 45 feet to 35 feet, again, is, is further away from Samuel Street than the house. By establishing the front yard variance in 1995, we're not asking for any greater relief on the front yard variance for either the deck or the pool. I do acknowledge we are asking for greater relief for the fence. I'm not going to uh, you know, try to misrepresent anything to this board. But here are uh, additional pictures of the deck. And as you can see from these photos, the beautiful deck uh, is consistent with the design of the house. And it, it is uh, not an overly large deck at all. Okay. Uh, the next variance is the front yard setback from 45 to 35 feet for the pool. Here are, uh, <coughs> here's a, a photograph of the pool. And then the, the last variance is to reduce the distance from any lot line from eight feet to six feet for a 120 square foot barbecue counter. Here's a photograph of the pool and the counter. <coughs> and as you can see from the photograph, can I have a little photograph? Uh, the property is beautiful. Uh, it's landscaped. Uh, <laughs> it all uh, meshes. Uh, it's uh, not out of that character for any of the homes, not only in Samuel Street, but probably not out of character for any home uh, in this town of Smithtown. Many residents have pools, many residents have decks. Unfortunately, because Mr. Scannell's lot is only 95 feet uh, deep, most of those accessory structures have to be in what would otherwise be a side yard, but because the lot is so shallow, are in fact uh, is his front yard. Uh, the fence, which is admittedly the most substantial uh, Variance because it reduces the front yard from 45 feet to one foot is, is not for what I would consider classically to be a structure. It's for a fence. Uh, it's not like Mr. Scannell's putting his deck or a garage one foot from the, from the property line. Okay. So in essence, what Mr. Scannell has, is what anyone else in the town of Smithtown has, he has a house. He's got an attached deck. Uh, he's got a, a fence, which was CO'd. Admittedly, it is two foot higher, and admittedly, it, it does come up to the, to the, uh, the one foot line. But, but it's a house with a deck and a pool and a fence. Because of that, we would submit for this board, in, in considering Section 267B of the town law, uh, that no undesirable change would be produced in the character of the neighborhood, uh, nor detriment to nearby property values would be created by the granting of these seven area variances. Uh, could we do some of these things by another method? Yes, obviously we could reduce the fence from six feet to four feet, uh, but because of the depth of the lot, Mr. Scannell could never have a pool. He probably could never have a deck without some variance. Uh, in fact, he wouldn't even be able to put his four foot fence up, which is required for the code without a front yard variance. Uh, the issue obviously being the, the height of the fence. Uh, I would submit that with, except for the paving and except for the front yard variance for the fence, none of the variances are substantial. Uh, I would submit that none of the proposed variances will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood. And I would submit that uh, none of the alleged difficulties are self-created uh, simply because of the, this, again, the, the depth of the lot. Uh, <laughs> And I would respectfully request that the, the board grant all the variances, and I'll answer any questions on behalf of the board or members of staff. Um, you know we were at the site. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I just want to clarify. Are you saying that he needs his paving uh, for his cars? Because when we were there, what is, you cannot use the garage for cars. That's what is correct. The, what is the garage being used for? S storage. Planning. The um, um, some of the variances seem sort of benign, but a couple seem like they uh, hurt the neighborhood. 
Um, in going down the street uh, today, it didn't seem to me that Samuel Street was particularly narrow. Um, I didn't measure it, but it looked to me like a typical residential street. Um, this house seemed to stand out in comparison to the others on the street. Um, and the paving in particular seemed to stand out and the fence somewhat as well. Um, certainly the garage uh, predates um, everything else on the property. The house, the board granted a variance for. The pool is set back further from the road than the house is. Um, and a lot of the, uh, or a couple of the other accessory structures are somewhat minor. But in the notion that the board is supposed to grant the minimum relief necessary, and uh, I would submit that there are alternatives not requiring a variance, um, it would seem that the paving uh, could be uh, reduced rather substantially. Uh, Samuel Street seemed to be, uh, or I shouldn't say seemed to be, is, is definitely a minor residential street. It's not like uh, Southern Boulevard or Lake Avenue or something where um, uh, it has that type of traffic volume or speed. Other people back out into the road um, to, to get around. And I would suggest that if the work hadn't been done yet and a property owner were requesting a variance, um, a Board of Appeals probably wouldn't grant this much relief. Um, so the fact that the person did it first, um, I don't think should, that they should be given more leniency than people who ask first and build second. Um, however, I do think that some relief is probably warranted. Uh, with respect to the fence, however, I would suggest that a four-foot fence with evergreens, um, the four-foot fence complies with the ordinance and the evergreens provide the privacy. Uh, the paving could be cut back a little bit um, and still provide the in from the west and out to the east. Um, some areas uh, seem to blob away from the garage more than, than uh, necessary, uh, especially if the garage isn't used as a garage and is used as a shed or a barn. It almost seems like the paving doesn't need to be there. Um, but in any event, I do think some relief should be gr given, but not as much as what's depicted here. Any questions? Any other questions? Good. Can I just have a quick question. On the survey that I'm looking at that you presented, mm. uh, do you have two curb cuts on Samuel? Yes. Oh, there are two curb cuts. Yes. In fact, the first curb cut is all the way to the west on right. the uh, corner, and then it comes out approximately halfway down a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, gentlemen? No questions. I'm going to return these pictures to you. Because we do have the others in the file. Thank you, Thank you so much. Okay. <clears throat> Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Come up, please. All right. <clears throat> Let me have your name, please. My name is Anthony Repalone, R-E-P-A-L-O-N-E. -E. I reside at 17 Samuel Street, Nesconset, New York. Raise your right hand, please. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Um, here on behalf of uh, Mr. Scott Scannell regarding some of the issues that were brought up in front of the board, uh, I want to say that I've been living at 17 Samuel Street directly across the street from the Scannells since 1992 before his home was even constructed. When I first moved in, it was nothing but woods other than that stable that council referred to earlier. Um, when Scott and Karen Skinnell built that home, um, I had no objection at that point. And any enhancements they've made to that home to beautify that house, I have, still have no objections. It's a beautiful home. It's very well maintained. Uh, I like to respectfully object to some of the issues that were brought up regarding Samuel Street not being that narrow. Living on that block for approximately 20 years, uh, I can certainly say that if cars park on that street, one car parks on that street, it's very difficult because of the construction of that roadway to get down that roadway without going into the opposite lane. That driveway that you're referring to, I believe it's much safer because it allows the Scannells to get on and off that roadway much easier um, to egress onto the roadway. Uh, and with kids in the neighborhood and cars do come down that 
block, even though it's not a major roadway, we do get a considerable amount of traffic coming down that street to get to the other parts of the neighborhood. So I disagree with the fact that the roadway is typical of a, a roadway in Smithtown. It certainly isn't. There's no sidewalks because of the fact that that roadway is that narrow. Um, you have to use extreme caution when you back out of my driveway when entering onto Samuel Street. And I have um, four drivers. Uh, and the Skinnells, as Council mentioned earlier, also has uh, three drivers with a fourth on the way. Um, any other variances that we're discussing tonight regarding the fencing and so on and so forth has done nothing, in my opinion, to compromise the integrity of that neighborhood. I'm very grateful for the neighbors that I do have. Everybody does a great job keeping that block looking beautiful and maintain the character that we're used to. So I um, would just like to give my opinion to the board that I believe that all the enhancements and improvements that the Skinnells have made to that home have done nothing to compromise the integrity and the beautiful uh, neighborhood that we are very fortunate to live in. All right, thank you so much. Did I swear him in? I don't remember. May I have I, your name, please? Donald Dolder, D-O-L-D-E-R. And your address? 8 Quenza Street. All right, raise Eight your right. Quenza, Q-U-E-N-Z-E-R Street. All right, raise your right hand, please. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. I, uh, I've been living in my house for 37 years, and Scott Scannell is right to the west of me. My backyard abuts his yard. <clears throat> I lived there when they used to have the horse barn, and it wasn't too pleasant in the backyard. Horses, the smell, and everything else. And when he came in and built his house, and maintained his house, I was ecstatic that he did such a great job. Him and his wife are out there every weekend during the summer maintaining his house, beautiful place. Anybody would be in this room would be happy to live next to him. As far as the blacktop in the front is concerned, I asked him what he, when he was building this, I asked him what he's doing there. He says, I have to make a place for the kids because if they play in the street, they're, uh, just, I can't trust the cars coming up and down. He did this for himself and also all the neighbor's kids who were growing up at the same time. As far as uh, <coughs> I, I will agree with the uh, t Tony, the guy who was here before me, about what he said, the same thing. And again, you couldn't live next to better neighbors in a better looking house and maintain, maintain, you're maintained as well as he did. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Before you come back, no, Jenny, oh. let me just see if there's anyone else. Is there anyone else that's going to speak? She's too nervous. Okay. That was the only reason I'm coming back. Okay. Uh, in the audience is Linda Elio. She lives across the street at 19 Samuel Street. Okay. And I'm going to read verbatim from what you wrote on my yellow pad. His driveway helps me getting out of mine, and she supports the applications. Okay. I've, otherwise, I have nothing add, to add unless you want to ask me any other questions. I don't think so. Anybody else have anything else? No. <clears throat> no thank you very much. You. Thank you so much. I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Is regularly moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I just want you to know there's no action tonight. Um, what's his name? Yeah. You, there's no action tonight because we don't have a secret. Okay. Thank you. Don't I sound good? Like a frog. <laughs> I was just talking about the case. Okay, the next next case is one six seven seven nine. GM Pietro, Joseph and Susan, two Grand Street, Smithtown, New York, northwest corner of St. Nicholas Avenue and Grand Street, Smithtown. Property zoned R ten. 
The request is a variance to reduce the minimum front yard from 40 feet to 31 feet for a proposed 231 square foot addition, 21 square foot front porch, 167 square foot deck, 360 square foot pool, and existing six foot fence. There's also a variance to reduce the minimum front yard setback from 40 feet to 16 feet for an existing six foot fence. May I have your name, please? My name is Joseph Jan Petro. I resided two Grand Street in Smithtown, New York. Okay. Raise your right hand, please. Oh. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. And would you like this gentleman to speak for you? The gentleman next to me, uh, John Cox, will represent me. Okay, John. Hello again. <laughs> Just state your name and your address. We just sure. have been sworn in. Uh, John Cox, 20 Camp Drive, Selden, New York. Okay. Here, we're, what we'd like to do is um, we'd like to build a family room in the front of the house. Um, yeah, speak up, John. I'm sorry. We're looking to build a 231 square foot. Uh, family room with a new entrance in front of the house. We, we would like to request that the uh, front yard setbacks be reduced from 40 to 31 uh, feet and so that we can, uh, this addition. Now these other things that were mentioned, all the pool and deck and all those, those were uh, things that had to be, that were already in existence uh, when he bought the house and he was, had to get variances for them to complete this uh, project. So the, the thing that we're looking for here obviously is for those things to remain but for the addition, uh, uh, we'd like to ask for that uh, granting of that minimum setback of 40 to 31 feet. Planning? I don't know if this reminds me of deja vu where the other one was 29 feet. Um, is the floor plan the same? It's a similar floor plan. Uh, one house is just back a little farther, I believe. That's what it is. <coughs> Obviously, just a little bit of a concern of turning the front yard setback in the neighborhood from 40 feet to 30 feet. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Can we uh, reply on something? Um, Joe would like to say something. <coughs> um, there's a home on 10 Riviera Drive um, around the block from me, same exact house, same neighborhood, and I believe their, their extension going forward is like 15 feet. But do you know if they have a variant for it? Oh, I don't. I believe yeah. they do. And I know there's some homes in my neighborhood itself, you know, they have extensions that it's almost similar to mine. Yeah. So. Unfortunately, people build without getting permits or variances. Right. No, this specific house did have a, a variance uh, uh, from the board. <clears throat> Gentlemen, anything else? No. All right. No questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? <clears throat> hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. So you move and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. <coughs> the next case is 16780, Jason Widmer, 17 Winston Drive, Smithtown, New York. Location, east side of Winston Drive, 690 feet. I'm sorry, 695 feet north of Churchill Lane, Smithtown. Property zoned R21. The request is a variance to reduce the minimum side yard setback from 16 feet to 8 feet for an existing 336 square foot shed. Reduce the minimum side yard setback from 6 feet to 11 feet for a proposed 883 square foot detached garage. Reduce the total side yards from 34 feet to 19 feet Increase the maximum height from 15 feet to 18 feet for a proposed 883 square foot detached garage. Increase the maximum paving in the front yard from 25% to 31% to increase the maximum side yard paving from 25% to 40%. Okay. May I have your name, please? My name is Jason Widmer. Use the mic, Jason. Thank you. Um, and your address? 17 Winston Drive, Smithtown, New York. All right. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Right. You want the gentleman to speak for you? Please. Okay. May I have your name and spell your last name? Sure. It's Michael Rubenstein, R-U-B-I-N-S-T-E-I-N. 1070 Middle Country Road, 
Suite number seven, Selden, New York, 11784. All right, raise your right hand, please. Mm -hmm. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Okay. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, the application before you this evening is uh, requesting several variances. Uh, one is to reduce the minimum side yard from 16 feet to 8 feet. Reduce the total side yards from 34 to 19 for an existing 336 square foot wood shed. It was built under a PN number 91175 and a CFO dated 102596. The application before you this evening is for a 96 square foot addition to the shed. Additionally, we request a variance to permit an accessory structure in the side yard and reduce the minimum side yard from 16 feet to 11 feet and reduce the total side yards from 34 to 19 for a proposed 883 square foot detached garage. Uh, also, we request the variance to increase the maximum height from 15 feet to 17.8 feet for the detached garage and a variance to increase the maximum front yard paving from 25 to 31 and increase the maximum side yard paving from 25 to 40 percent. Uh, this, the property currently has an open work permit for a new dwelling. Permit number 132090 issued in August of 2012. Uh, the house is currently under construction. I believe the board had an opportunity to see the site. Um, the permit was taken out due to a uh, house fire. There was also a demo permit for the previous house that was taken out in December of 2011. That was permit 131251, and it was C of O'd on 6-5-2012. Um, as far as the house goes, uh, it did receive Suffolk County Health Department approval, um, highway approvals, planning approval. Um, with respect to the five considerations of a variance, I <coughs> offer the following. Whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or detriment to nearby properties will be created by granting the area variances. Um, several of these variances are existing. The driveway is existing. We're um, proposing to uh, legalize what's presently there. The house was designed with the driveway. Uh, there will be some slight modification to it. Um, the driveway as it presently exists does extend back to the shed in question. Uh, and we will be making a right-hand turn onto the property where the proposed detached garage will be um, constructed. Um, the, as far as the height goes, uh, we believe the 2.8 feet to be minimal. Uh, the reason for it, and I do have copies of plans which will show the relationship from the house to the garage. It is a detached garage that is connected by means of a, um, it was a breezeway. Uh, it is not enclosed. If I may approach. What we're trying to accomplish is to continue the side porch to the garage. Um, I look at these and, then I'll, and that will. Then I'll pass these to we're also trying to maintain the 612 pitch that's on the existing house as well. Uh, the house does come out of the ground uh, a little bit further. Uh, it's approximately five steps, which is about 40 inches up out of the ground. Um, and therefore, when we try to line up fascias and roof lines, um, you know, it comes out to a difference of about 2.8 feet. So therefore, we believe that is a minimal variance. <coughs> uh, like I said, the paving in the front yard is mainly existing uh, and has been there for a long time. Uh, we're a little confused with regards to what happened with the shed and why it is 96 square feet over. <coughs> uh, it was C of O'd 
uh, as a bill prior. Um, we do have we do have an inspection notice for a bill prior in 1996, and we also have the copy of the certificate of zoning compliance. Uh, if I may approach, I could show you, but these are originals. If we can maybe have them um, back, we can make copies. John, want to see these? Oh, he has oh, a copy. Okay. He has copies. All right. Okay. Um, so those were uh, inspected, and it was CVOD as a bill prior. Um, whether the benefit can be sought by the applicant be can be achieved by some other method, excuse me, feasible to the applicant to pursue other than an area of variance. Um, due to the nature of the width of the site, it's only 100 feet wide, and it goes back about 462 feet. Um, it would be almost difficult, you know, it would be very difficult to put a detached garage considering the shed is on one side. Um, there's also in the front, per Suffolk County Health Department requirements, uh, the septic system needs to be in the front. And then behind the house is also an existing swimming pool, which was also CFO'd. So the garage kind of has to be in this little area um, between the house and the swimming pool. Uh, whether the crested area variance is uh, major or minor, uh, we believe that the variances proposed are minor in nature. Uh, we don't believe it'll have an impact on the environment considering there was a house there prior. Um, I do have a copy of an aerial photograph that does show that the neighbor immediately to the north has similar structures and setbacks, if I may. Are there any other questions from the board? I do have a couple. Can you tell me what the square footage of the house is? Uh, the existing house? The one you're building. Okay, the first floor area is 1568, and the second floor area is 1406. So it's about uh, 2,980 square feet. Okay. And the garage is a three-car garage? It'll be a three-car garage. Okay. <coughs> we'll see why I'm asking. Okay. Um, planning? A couple of things. Uh, first, um, for the record, uh, you handed me a letter that you received, um, and we should make this part of the file. It's a two-page letter with a photograph from a neighbor, and it, I won't read the whole thing because it's so long, but it's dated September 20th, 2012, and it's from Mr. and Mrs. Mark Vanelli, 21 Winston Drive, Smithtown, New York. It's to the uh, uh, chairwoman, and um, it's regarding this case. It's a page and a half, and it, in summary, it's an opposition. In that, in this, in the closing paragraph, it says allowing this requested relief will greatly impact the privacy, quality of, quality of life, and safety of my family and our neighbors, with the activity that comes from a compound with six garage bays. Um, and parking for more than a dozen vehicles, um, or it says a dozen more vehicles. And then there's a, uh, there's a photograph. So you, would, you said you wanted to make that part of the file. Um, separately from that, I would just ask from an alternative standpoint, um, from a side yard, um, it seems possible, instead of having a garage that's 24 feet deep, to make it only 20 feet deep and, if necessary, a little bit wider. Um, and secondly, it seems as though that a garage could be 15 feet high uh, and have the same pitch roof. Uh, I'm not sure why it needs to be taller. And then lastly, the circular driveway uh, for, from a m minimum relief, uh, you know, the, how the board is supposed to grant the minimum relief necessary. 
it would seem that uh, you could have a circular driveway <laughs> and the paving be a little bit now uh, a little bit less than what's there. If the applicant would want to respond to that, you want to respond? You want to respond to the oh. to the paving. I mean, in response to the neighbor, um, we're not proposing a six-car garage, so I don't know where that comes from. We never were proposing a six-car six garage. Um, do you have a problem with the depth? Depth being 24 feet? From 24 to 20. We do have three cars. No, 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 the depth. I mean, it's regarding the depth. Uh, I mean, it, they do have larger vehicles, SUVs, trucks, and Cadillacs um, that they collect. Um, so that's the, the reason for the depth. And the everyday cars. Um, regarding the paving, I, speaking to Mr. <laughs> Widmer earlier, he did mention that, uh, you know, looking at it and seeing the house as it's situated, that uh, a reworking of the circular driveway is certainly, uh, he's certainly considering that. <clears throat> okay. Now how about, we talked about the width of, uh, of the garage, but how about the height? Because it's only, a, uh, when we looked at the drawing, the garage door is only eight feet high, so you could bring that down to 15 feet with the same pitch. We could, but then the roof of the overhang, like the uh, elevations that I showed you, how the house connects to the garage. The small roofed over would then be above the roof of the garage if we were to drop it. One of the things I noticed when I looked at it, is it possible when you come out the side of the house, that roof over, I, I see you want it to tie directly into the roof line of the garage in the back. Garage, right, yeah, right. we're trying to keep everything in line. The question I have is you're coming out on the same uh, height as the first floor, is it possible to have your step come down from the house to that porch and in essence lowering that roof by however many steps you come down out of the house? I'm sorry, you, you want to come out of the house? Well, it, to it looks a like on that porch you come out and you're at the level of the first floor, which presents the need to have the roof line at the same height. But if you came out of that side door and went down one or two steps, you could actually drop that roof line down <laughs> and then line the two up and still have a garage that's within. Yeah, the patio in the back also wraps around the house at the same level. Mm -hmm. wow. So to step it would be well, almost... One of the things that this board does is when we're granting side yard setback relief and you are also in turn asking for a height variance, it kind of makes the impact even greater on the neighbor because we're moving the building closer and making it higher. So it makes it a little difficult for us to approve it. So we're trying to find some common ground that we can maybe approve something that, that works to your client as well. Right. No, we we understand that. Um, you know, do you have a? I mean, I, I mean, I, my neighbor's got a thirty-foot barn. You know, why can't I have something half the height? I, Mr. Do you want to just yeah. speak to that? Sure, of course. You know, I we're building uh, the house after a, a fire. Use the mic. Sure, please. no problem. We are building the house after having a fire to accommodate our growing family. Uh, we're going to be bringing. Uh, a senior into our uh, house, my father, who is almost handicapped. We do have to uh, make certain accommodations for him. Adding steps and lowering things are going to create issues in the house. I would think if we're going to make steps down on a deck that wraps around, that one day he could be in a wheelchair, uh, could create issues for him. Uh, and safety issues, as well as um, the driveway in the front we were talking about before. We are reducing the driveway square footage considerably because of the size of the house. The house is going to is moved forwards about 10 feet from the existing house, mm. and that's going to reduce the driveway considerably. Uh, the garage height and depth are two issues. Or that you're proposing uh, to reduce the height and the depth. Uh, the average depth, oh, the average depth, the average length of one of our cars, uh, 20 feet. I don't think you could, I don't think you could fit one of them in. Uh, the Cadillac today is 18 feet long. 
you know, a pickup truck today is well over the length of that. <clears throat> the height of a pickup truck is probably over six feet, maybe a little more, maybe about six, four. You know, there is a, you know, the height of that plus lining up with the existing house, it look, you know, a little bit, excuse the way I put it, cockeyed, you know, to have it meeting the, what is it, the gable end? in the middle to meet the gable end in the middle if we if we lower it what if the garage were the same height and dimensions but just slid out of the side yard moved 4.1 feet toward the center of the property oh that would create a safety issue and what is that that would create a major safety issue with the pool we have children in our family and okay. blocking the pool, uh, the visibility from the house uh, by putting uh, the garage in the middle of the yard that would uh, you know, prevent us from uh, monitoring the children in the neighborhood that swim in my pool on a daily basis. What if the garage were more toward the other side of the property, flipped, um, so it wouldn't be in the line of sight with the pool? Flipped. Yeah. I don't, I don't, it would require more that. paving to get into the garage bays. But you know, from my perspective, what you're doing is you're creating an impact on your neighbor. Uh, which neighbor would that be? I'm just curious. Well, the one that would be closest to it. Uh, the it one says the Freund immediate, here. It, immediately next door to me? Yeah. Um, that's uh, 19 Winston Drive? I don't know. 19 Winston Drive, I see him every day. I go to his house and bring him coffee every day sure. and bring his newspaper to him. Uh, I don't think that he... Uh, would uh, object to it. He comes yeah. by my house every day. But the zoning board doesn't look at um, <coughs> variances that way because friends come and go, people move in and out. But when they move away, the garage isn't going to be replaced with one when he that goes, complies. The guy's going away, selling me his house. Excuse me? I'm buying the guy's house. I don't okay. think he's going to object to uh, me building something in between a house but, that I'm buying. See, that's not the point. The point isn't. A relationship between two people it's there's another piece of property there and someday your property but will be owned by person a and that property will be owned by person b and they'll have a, a, a building too close to their property line that would be my son owning that it would depend if i could fit the car in it Say you walk in and come into the house with groceries, you know, you have to have the garage open, you know, to take the yeah. groceries out of the back. I mean, you need a few feet. I mean, that's the average depth of a, a lid. We have a, um, a shed there that we tried to park a, a car in, and uh, you can't even park a car in it. And that's uh, 20, how many feet, how, how deep is that one? That's 24 feet right there. And you can barely walk around it. If, you, if I, put, put if I could ask, what would be wrong with putting the garage behind the pool? Putting the yeah. garage behind Further the from the house than the pool is. Um, oh, um, by the way, we are going to be removing uh, the shed on, on the uh, secondary shed that's on the property as well. I don't know if that was brought to your attention. Uh, the secondary shed that we use for storage is going to be removed as well. So, and to put the garage behind the pool, I mean, how would you, how would you get there? Yeah, I, I don't know how you would get to the garage. Besides the uh, the long distance, you'd have to walk uh, around. You might as well park on Churchill. Okay. I mean, that is halfway. That's going to be what, close to 200 feet. About 150. Well, at least 150 feet. I don't see the problem of moving that garage further instead of 11.9, moving it up. I know you say you can't see the pool from, from the house, but mm -hmm. I certainly hope you wouldn't be watching the children from the house that are in the pool. <laughs> no, but it would be nice to be able to see a child if they're sitting outside the pool in the area. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's not just pool. There's patio there. You know, there's a you know, a place where you can sit. If a child no. got up and, you know, fell in the pool by accident, mm -hmm. you know, they are safety issues. That's why we have, you know, I mean, we keep an eye on them whenever possible. Mm -hmm. All right, let us decide and we'll let you know. 
Okay. All right. One, one other thing. The, uh, the property lines that my neighbors have with, for their garages and barns are less than eight feet okay. on both sides. The, the plans don't show that. Pardon? I'm sorry. The plans don't show that. Not my plans. I don't have the, uh, their, uh, the, the measurements of their property, you know, their things that are on their property. Okay. But, but I, have a, I have a greenhouse that's not even six inches from my, my property line. Yeah. One of the requirements of the board is when you submit an application is to depict those sorts of things. The, uh, these structures yeah, on the adjacent properties. But this guy has a, has like a, like a, like a, like a farm. No, you don't. It's bordering no. my property. Right. We'll do what we have to do. Show, I mean, All I right, thank you that. so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Come up, please. Hi. Yes, my name is Antoinette Frumusa, F-R-U-M-U-S-A, and I, I reside at 15 Winston Drive, right next door to Jason. Okay, raise your right hand. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that I'm so happy that Jason is building a house next door Excuse to us. Me, this board. Yes. I'm so happy that he is finally building a house next door to us. We've been living next door to, to a boarded house that was, you know, a real sore, you know, to us in the neighborhood. And I'm so glad that he's finally doing something with it and, uh, you know, we're happy about that. Um, my mother actually owns the house. I reside there with my daughter. She actually owns that house and the house across the street at 12 Winston Drive. Um, yes, we do have a two-car detached garage in the backyard that was built about 45 years ago and it's used just for storage. You can go there at any time and check it out. Um, the neighbors have all been talking. They've been coming to me. I've been going to them. Everybody's kind of in an uproar about this large garage that's going up in the backyard. We're talking about structures. He does have two existing structures there already. And one is like a shed type structure, and the other one is a garage. It has a garage door. It's the size of a garage. And um, mm. so there is one garage already. And I understand the proposed garage is for at least three cars. So that would make it a four-car garage property and put all these structures onto a piece of property that's only about a half acre because beyond the pool there's another half acre of property is a lot of overdeveloping, a lot of overdeveloping. That is not in character with our neighborhood. We have a lot of trees. We're very wooded. Um, Jason's property has no trees on it. All the trees are gone. Um, you know, we're not saying that he's you know, not allowed to build a garage. Of course, we all have the right to build a garage. There may be a two-car garage, a little more scaled down. It is going to be very high. I didn't know that. We had a conversation the other day. I didn't know how high it was going to be. Uh, my mother was informed of a lot of this stuff, so that is why I'm here tonight, to voice her um, concerns about it also. Having that many cars going through the backyard into a garage is going to affect us. Um, you know, other than that, uh, I would like to see him, like, maybe make that existing garage maybe a little bit bigger and scale down this other garage that he's trying to put up. And, uh, you know, just extend your driveway and go into it, make the doors in the front and just go into it from there. You don't even need to pave anything in the backyard. Um, I feel, and, and uh, I have two other people with me tonight, my brother who also owns a home on Winston feels the same way, my uncle who owns a house across the street feels the same way and many other neighbors. Um, the neighbor on the other side of Jason, an old gentleman um, who could not be here this evening uh, due to health reasons, he was supposed to be here, uh, but could not make it, is not happy about it also. Um, so we're not saying that he shouldn't have a structure back there, we're just saying just scale it down just a little bit, keep within the um, confines of the, you know, of the property, and uh, you know, make it look like it belongs there, not build this huge structure in the backyard. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Do you cannot talk from this chair, please.
You can walk over to the microphone. Let me let me have your name, please. William Woodman. Let me have your name. William Woodman. <laughs> William Woodman. Okay. And your address? One Columbus Avenue. Brentwood. Okay. Raise your right hand. <clears throat> you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, what she failed to look at uh, to find out is that the, one of those structures in the back is coming down. We know that. No, oh, but apparently she didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, and it's that's what. Oh, and it's half the size of the property. So when it comes down, it's you know, here nor there. I just wanted you to be aware of it. We're I not. didn't know that you didn't. You did know. Yeah, you did. You people are so very smart. No, yeah, and it's only three of us in the family. Me, it's called the Patron, Jason, and okay, the bad. boss. Right and the boss? There. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. That ends my... Okay, thanks. Uh, do I have the right to speak again? Very quickly, please. Okay, if you look at the aerial survey that uh, was presented to you by uh, Michael Rubenstein, you'll notice on the property to the north. north of us, there is a greenhouse that is six inches from our property line, okay? Um, as well as their barn that's uh, in their backyard that is well over 30 feet high. It's in the uh, aerial diagram there. Um, impact. I don't think that my 17-foot garage, the 17 feet, 17.8, 17 17.8 feet, will impact the garage after the modifications that we do to the neighborhood and to make it. You know, I mean, we're only doing, you know, making it look better. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. A legislative motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. You really move the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, the next case on the agenda is number 16781. That one's adjourned till October 23rd. After that is case 16,782. Um, Madam Chair, uh, there are two cases that are kind of like twin cases, and I think it would be best to read them together. Thank you. Um, they're side-by-side -side lots. The first one is 16782. The applicant is 2002 Legal Way. 144 Medford Avenue, Patchogue, New York. The location is the north side of Donna Court, 287 feet west of Harnett Road. The property is owned R43. <coughs> the request is a variance to permit a six-foot fence on top of a four-foot berm, and a variance to increase the maximum height of a fence from six feet to 12 feet. Case 16782, I'm sorry, 16783 is also uh, has the same applicant, 2002 Legal Way, 144 Medford Avenue, Patchogue, New York. The location is the west side of Donna Court, 338 feet west of Harnett Road, Comac. The property is owned R43. The request is slightly different. The request is a variance to permit a six-foot fence on top of a four-foot berm and to increase the maximum height of a fence from six feet to ten feet. I suspect the first one's an error and probably should say from 6 to 10 because when you add 6 and 4, it doesn't come to 12. Yeah, I don't even need this. All right, let's not mix them up. All right, this is the second one. Okay. Um, we're just trying to get two cases so you have two different. All right, may I have your name, please? My name is James Fuller. And the address is 144 Medford Avenue, Patchogue, New York. Okay. Raise your right hand, please. 
you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. This is a, uh, a four-lot subdivision that uh, we cut the road in off of Harnett Road, mm -hmm. just north of New Highway. Uh, so it's four distinct lots, uh, totally separate from any other neighborhood or anything. It's just, <coughs> it's yeah. just unique and kind of sits by itself. Madam um, Chair? Yes. I assume he's the president or the partner? Yes, I'm the president. Okay. Yeah, sorry. No. Okay. So um, sorry. We, uh, we went through a very long subdivision process. Uh, where we had a property over five acres and um, we got whittled down where I had to take 2.2 acres and give it back to the town uh, because the town had put a catch basin on the corner of Harnett Road and New Highway and instead of putting pools to, to drain off the, the road water, they just put a big galvanized pipe and dumped it on my property. <laughs> and so when they did that because there's a lot of clay there, the water stood and cattails grew and then they called it a wetlands. So because of that, uh, I lost basically 40% of the property. And it was an R43 zone, so they, they squished me down to <laughs> R21 and configured the subdivision so that unfortunately I'm stuck with a, a piece of property that backs up to the sunken meadow parkway. Um, I try to build the most beautiful house I could, uh, but I've had numbers of buyers who have come and they love the house. Two of the houses are already sold on the street. Nice. This is the third one of four but it's at the end of the block, and behind the house is the Sunken Meadow Parkway, and to the uh, south is the 2.2 acres that I had to give back to the town of Smithtown. So there's, there's no neighbors around other than the parkway and the, the town's undisturbed property. The, the lot to the, to the north of it is also going to be benefited by this sound fence. Um, I've had a number of buyers who have come to the property, they love it, they go stand in the backyard, and unfortunately the elevation of the backyard is about a foot higher than the roadway of the Sunken Meadow Parkway. And I went ahead and, because I tried to, you know, just build something according to the, 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 the code, I put a six foot fence up, I spent a lot of money on this uh, sound deadening materials called this mass loaded vinyl, it's supposed to absorb 30 decibels of sound, thought it was going to be the magic bullet. I put the six foot fence up, and unfortunately when I stood in the backyard I could see over the fence and I could see the cars going by and obviously I hear all day long this roar because that's a concrete roadway on the sunken meadow, it's not blacktop. So it makes a tremendous loud noise no matter what time of the day, if it's the weekend, it doesn't make a difference. And it is, I cannot sell this house now because of the sound. So what I'm proposing is that you allow me to put a berm so that it's a little bit nicer looking and now put the six foot sound fence on top of the berm. So that at least at, at 10 feet, I should be able to block the view from the backyard so that the people at least could put a patio down someday and enjoy the backyard to some extent. If, if they're standing up in the house with the window open, they're still gonna hear the road. They're gonna see the road. So I'm just trying to come up with some kind of compromise so that I'll be able to sell this house. Uh, because unfortunately the way that I got configured, uh, you know, when the town took the 2.2 acres away from me. Um, I don't think it's necessarily uh, something that's uh, setting a bad precedent. If you go along Motor Parkway in Comac, you'll see those the wood sound fences behind people's houses. It's much higher. Uh, you know, it's, it's an eyesore. Um, if you go across the street from the, uh, the Smith Haven Mall, the Hamlet, they've, they've built a huge berm. With a, with, a, with a concrete sound fence above that, so you can't even see the top of the houses on the other side. I yeah. think it's called Country Woods, is that that's the section now? Yeah, and it's the uh, yeah. Hamlet. So the, the only people who are going to see this, this berm and this fence are the squirrels, I guess, on the, the ro you know, who are living on the, the, the roadway, or maybe you know, the chipmunks over in the, the town of Smithtown area. <laughs> and actually on the other side of the adjoining property, it's owned by Sherman Carl. And I had tried to purchase that property when I bought the five acres, and he said, I'm never selling that property. I'm giving it to the, the county for a land preservation and open space. Okay. So. Let me go through this, though. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Flynn because we do have a letter from the New York State Office of Parks and Recreation. All right? And then we may be able to see if we can make some compromise or something. Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> New York State town law requires that uh, boards of appeals notify um, state park commissions when a, 
uh, uh, variances within 500 feet of a state park or parkway. <coughs> so the, the uh, board notified the Long Island State Park Commission. Uh, they responded and they object to the variance. Um, the planning department at first blush also thought that the variance would probably create an impact on the parkway. However, when you inspect the site, I, I don't think it would. The planning department recommends approval um, subject to conditions. The conditions, um, except for one, kind of basically are not novel. They don't, they're not in addition to the town code. They're kind of like reminders to you or whoever uh, builds on the property that there are other sections of the town code. But they basically have to do with the maximum slope, the fact that the, uh, it needs to um, be only on your property, it can't be on the state property, um, that it has to be vegetated. There's one uh, condition um, that also is basically a reminder that um, the subdivider, which I guess is true, <coughs> um, needs to comply with the planning board's conditions of approval, and one of which requires you to put a fence on the property line. Thank you. So you either need to put a fence on the property line or try to get a waiver from the planning board, in addition to the one that you want to build near the property line. But you wish, because obviously there's three sides, there's three properties. The one, uh, the one touching the parkway. Oh, that's the, the one I'm asking, right? Right. Oh. So, um, that's what I'd like to do. So basically, the only uh, condition that um, is customized is one that says that the, the f sound uh, fence must uh, basically meet the specifications of the sound fence constructed by the Suffolk County Department of Public Works. Um, as I understand tonight, um, the fence that you've already purchased is vinyl and the county's is wood. I think that as long as it's effective or equally effective at deadening the sound, it would meet our recommendation. Actually, my defense is a wooden uh, stockade fence. Oh. But what I have is a it's, a, it's a roll, it's a mat. It comes in four foot widths. It's called mass loaded vinyl. And it gets, it gets stapled or attached to the back side of the stockade fence. Mm -hmm. So when the sound comes off the roadway, it hits that, that mass loaded vinyl and absorbs the sound. At least that's what the scientists say. Hmm. But now, could you just define the vegetation? The, uh, what we're recommending is uh, on, the, on the berm, um, I believe it's red cedar and American holly or equal. See, I can't, I really can't do that. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, it's just, it's an additional expense that is, I mean, I, I don't get it, you know. I got a fence. Is it because I'm trying to hide the fence? Because if I put, if I put the vegetation up, where am I going to put the vegetation? Behind the fence in fr or in front of the fence? There, it would be behind the fence. Um, the maximum pitch of the land of a berm is three to one. So if you have a four foot high berm, the berm's going to be, um, basically it'll be, what is it? 12 feet wide. Yeah, it would be. 12 feet on each yeah. side. So the fence will end up, if the fence is at the top of the berm, the fence will be 12 feet from the property line. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. If you, if you, I only have a 50-foot backyard. I understand. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a gigantic mound with trees and fences that are going to go, you know, 24 feet into the backyard. It's just, well, it's just not, it's, you know. Whether the condition is on or not, you have to do it. This, this was put on there. We're recommending it because there's a section of the town code that requires it. It doesn't require hollies and red cedars, but it requires it to be vegetated. Yes. We recommended that because they're uh, shade tolerant, drought tolerant. Um, so, I mean, other species would work, but, uh, um, and it says or equal. Um, I mean, couldn't I just use some kind of uh, matting to, because I would assume that the purpose of this is so that the berm doesn't erode. Correct. Yeah. It's so also normally to screen fences, but, um, which might be the case here. Because behind the, behind, directly behind the fence is densely vegetated buffer mm -hmm. from the highway. So for me to, you know, to put up all these trees, which cost a lot of money, and, and this, this vinyl stuff is a lot more expensive than you think, um, I get, if, if the, the purpose is, is to keep the berm from being able to erode, I mean, I can deal with that issue in regards to the berm. Couldn't I, couldn't I just use the, uh, the, the matting? Sure. And, 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 it, and it hydro seed it, you know what well, I mean? The reason we recommend the, um, the taller plants 
is the parkways are considered scenic resources, both in the town's master plan and the regional plan. And the buffer, where we could see the cars today, in the wintertime, certainly the fence would be very visible. Um, and apparently, you're not proposing to put up a wood fence, but really, I guess what amounts to it is a big white roll. No, it's actually a wood stockade fence. But the part that's facing the parkway is wood. plastic, apparently. It's, and, it's and a and black. Roll. It's a black vinyl. That's so, a, oh, kind of like a wrap on a pipe. No, it's it's four feet and just you know goes as long as the yeah. fence, which is 275 feet. Mm -hmm. I mean, and there'll be a, there'll be the seam is taped because it's a six foot fence. Right. So that it, you would basically see there'd be black vinyl on the back of the okay. fence if you were standing on the parkway looking towards the back of the property. Sure. So I mean, I'm doing most of the talking. It's really the board's meeting, but uh, I mean that's our recommendation. The board makes the decision. I understand what you're saying. From my perspective. Um, <coughs> The planning department has to look out for the public as well. Um, and the traveling public tends not to come to public hearings. Yeah, I don't, I don't think as you're driving down the sunken meadow at 65, you're probably going to notice it's probably going to go by really fast. <laughs> but, you know, it's just not, I'm very, very deep into this property, unfortunately. Five years of waiting on a subdivision, I missed the right. market. Now the, the price of homes are down the tube. I got a house that's, you know, sitting on the end of the, pro, uh, the, end of the street with the uh, marketing uh, challenges. And you know to add more expense than just <coughs> berm, the fence, the vinyl on the back of the fence. I mean, literally, this is probably sure. gonna, it's coming out to be like at least a fifteen, twenty thousand dollar fence. Right. I'd like know. to stop the nightmare. Yeah, I would um, appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever I you could do. I to understand help. what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know that the berm can't be on state property. It's going to be all on your property. All right? on my property. Yeah. It'll consume about 40% of the backyard. Well, Although I mean, that's, that's you know, maybe on your side, if you push it in six feet, you could then build a retaining wall, but that's more expense than grading. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. the reason I tried to use the mass loaded vinyl in the stockade. You know? and, and a berm as opposed to boxing it up with a retaining wall. Listen, <laughs> if, yeah, I, I, the easiest thing for me to do is to put a galvanized pipes and, and to run a, a, you know, a chain link fence with yeah. this mass loaded vinyl and then put the arborvitaes or whatever in front of or behind it in front of it, whatever you'd like, I could do that too. Sure. You know. Then I won't have to deal with the berm and I won't have to leave lose sure. as much backyard. But I just I I just try to make it look more aesthetically pleasing. But yeah, would I could do galvanized pipes, a chain link, you know, put the mass loaded vinyl on that and then you know okay. put the, the the uh, screening in front of it. It's the board's call, not the planning department. And I I gather they'll They'll come to the. I just decision. I just didn't propose that because I thought maybe you'd like a berm and a, and a six foot fence better. I just, I just thought it would be more aesthetically pleasing, but the other way I'm, uh, I'm I'll do that as well. You know, this no, way I'll have more backyard space. You know, because then the, I want this gigantic berm in the backyard. One thing I would like to just try to help you out with, you, you maybe either forgot or weren't aware that another fence is required along the back lot line in addition to this one that will be 12 feet from the back property line. So to you which, may fence, want to, which fence do you mean? Excuse me? Which fence do you mean? I, the planning board required a, a fence, a six-foot fence, and I think it's stockade. No, I the, think that was the, the construction line. fence. That was a construction fence, like for snow drifts and other stuff during construction for any erosion yeah. issues. I, I that was one of those black plastic fences. I don't you think know, I'm wrong. I, I, I think if you check the planning board minutes um, and condition, I mean, if I'm wrong, great. I'm not trying to hurt you. <laughs> I'm just trying to yeah. alert you to the fact um, that what was told to me today by the planning director is that there was a condition of approval from the planning board requiring a stockade fence on the property line. And you might want to try to either get that waived or factor that into what you want to do from here. I guess I'll be back again. Well, it's a different board. Same. No, room, I know. I'll be here room. on October the 3rd for the extension of my road bond, too. You know, okay. no, I'm going to set up a shop back here somewhere. I mean, you could start charging rent. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll double check that as well. But so then maybe, maybe if you would consider. Uh, the uh, the ten foot chain link with uh, arborvitaes with the arborvitaes yeah then that that would be <laughs> that would be a better solution then especially nice if I have to put another house. you saw it yes we were there today yeah I'm trying to make it yes. look nice yes. <laughs> all right okay thank you thank you okay. is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application hearing none I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing so moved second. 
I don't know which is which. This is the second case, I believe. This is mine. This is the first case? Yeah. Okay, the next uh, cases are ones that were adjourned from previous hearings. You didn't vote. I think you, no, you made we didn't a vote. You asked for a motion or something. Yeah. Sorry. We didn't do it. All right. You have it? Okay. Well, uh, <coughs> Are you okay? No, I think this is mine. Okay. All right. I'll entertain the motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Is it, do, you, do you want intermission? Oh, okay. Um, okay, the next case. I don't think he's here. Hmm? I don't think he's here. Okay. The next case is um, 16,711. And um, the applicant <coughs> is Julio Pena, 274 Pulaski Road, Kings Park. The location is the south side of Pulaski Road. 125 feet east of Johnson Avenue, Kings Park. The property is owned R10. The request is a variance to increase the size of an accessory structure in the rear yard from 750 square feet to approximately 1,776 square feet. To increase the size of accessory structure in the rear yard from 15 feet to approximately 18 feet. The public notice says size, but I think that means height and to increase the size, and again, I think it means height, the height of an accessory structure in the rear yard from one story to two stories. Yeah. He's not here. Okay. So, yeah. Well, what are we going to do? Uh, well, no. But there are people here that if we have an open meeting, they have an opportunity to speak. Can you hold the hearing without... I'm not adjourning it again. Oh, no, because no, we can't no, even no. open it. Yeah. Okay. No. We'll close the hearing and we'll make a Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What do you, what, tell me what? The, the hearing won't go on because there's no, it hasn't been advertised as far as you know, there's no affidavits of posting or right. mailing. So, but I, I'm not going to adjourn it again. This Correct. Is, yeah. We'll make so a decision close it. based just on what we have. What we have. So I'll just close it. You can make a motion a second and close. Okay. A vote to close. They can't speak though. The neighbors can't speak. No, no. no. If we don't open it. Okay. All right, I'm making a motion to close the hearing. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Yeah. All right, what it means is that this is the last time. We're not going to adjourn it anymore. We're going to take action on this case with the evidence we have. I can't have you speak because the applicant is not here. All right, so we will make a decision. All right, I'm very, yeah. Okay. Never before. <laughs> I know. No, there's still some people here. Um, Ready? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, the next case is 16736, Anna Laporta. Um, one Map Lane, Comac, New York. The location, northeast corner of Map Lane and Apple Lane, Comac. Property zoned R10. The request is a special exception to, to permit temporary living quarters for a son. To modify a special exception standard to permit a temporary dwelling unit greater than oh, 1600 yeah. square feet to 1478 square feet. To waive a special exception standard <coughs> that requires the temporary living quarters be economical and practical to convert the use back to a single family residence. To modify the special exception standard that requires the floor area ratio to be in, in compliance with the ordinance. In other words, to increase the floor area ratio from 25% to 32%. To reduce the minimum front yard setback from 40 feet to 33 feet for a proposed 182 square foot first floor addition. To reduce the minimum side yard setback from 12 feet to 9 feet for a 205 square foot porch. 
and to increase the maximum paving in the front yard from 25 percent to 33 percent. And this is the continuation right. of an earlier All right, let me hearing. have your name, please. My name is Anna Laporta. And your address? One Mopple. One Mopple Okay, New raise York. your right. Go ahead. Come on. Raise your right hand, please. You swear to tell the whole truth or nothing but the truth. I do. And you want your son to speak for you? Yes, please. Okay. Let me have your name now. It's Alex Laporta. And your address? One Map Lane, Comac, New York, 11725. All right, raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth or nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Now, this is, this, I said, third time you're here, second time you're here? Third. Third. Okay. Everything is on the record. <coughs> the only reason I'm letting you come back is because of that PAR that I gave, that you received. Okay. All right? That's the only thing you are going to address, is that PAR. Okay. All right? The recommendation, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, uh, good evening, uh, Madam Chairwoman and the members of the Board of Zoning Appeals <coughs> and the Planning Department and everyone else. It's good to see everyone tonight. I know it's a long night. Um, okay, the, the first portion of the recommendations in dispute is uh, our compliance with the Standard 2. Uh, the standard states that the <coughs> FAR uh, should not exceed 25%, and the submitted plans are at 30%. I, I believe it was. A, he mentioned 32%, but I think it was at 30%. Um, we are trying to comply with this standard by modifying the plans to reach this goal. Uh, unfortunately, we are only able to cut the FAR to 27.14%. Um, which is revised in this, these plans if you, uh, <coughs> if you want the... Okay, do we, you have these the new plans? These are the new plans, yes. Have you seen the new plans? No. Um. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. You're going to have to share these, I guess. You'll have to share these. I'm sorry about that. Let me overlook it. Can you see? Can you see it, Steve? Okay. You're going to give us a minute now. Of uh, course. Of course. Take as long as you need. Are you looking? You see this? Can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. How um, is it economical and practical to convert this back to a single family home? How economical and practical? Yeah, how is it? How, how easy is it to convert back to a single family home? Oh, no, I didn't. Um, hold on a second. From our standpoint, we feel that it is. Uh, very economical to convert back to a single family house or dwelling. Mm -hmm. um, as far as uh, the second floor uh, addition, we're only adding two, f two extra feet, um, but that is because uh, the, the roof is, is bowing and uh, from the previous, uh, from the previous uh, renovations, uh, the structure of that house, the roof itself is, uh, is it's just faulty, so we had to extend at least two feet to uh, to change uh, the uh, the rafters, I believe. Uh, because this represents a dangerous condition, and, and it's, it must be corrected. Uh, so that that portion of the house would not be uh, taken uh, taken out. Uh, as far as the front addition. Um, uh, that's just a, ex, an extension to one room and also the kitchen downstairs. As, as for making it economical to change back to a single family dwelling, um, upstairs can be converted into just uh, take the kitchen out. Um, and we've had, uh, not, not, it was a word of mouth uh, estimation from my contractor, but to take certain things down and to uh, restructure uh, walls in the house, it might 
cost about $4,000, uh, he told us. Um, I don't have a concrete uh, <coughs> estimation for that, but I can, I can get one uh, upon request if you need. One of the things that I would recommend is perhaps if you approve it, a condition that the entrance at, this, at the time that it's no longer <coughs> needed as a temporary living quarters or the, at the time that the home is sold, that the division in the, by the foyer that basically uh, leads to two apartments be removed so that clearly there's only one way into the house and once you're inside, um, the choice of whether to go upstairs to bedrooms or stay on the first floor <coughs> for the living space uh, would be made by the same people. It's not like it would be two apartments that are separated from each other. Do you, do you see what I mean? There, there are, it's like an interlock of three doors. Um, and I think to remove the two <coughs> interior doors and walls should be a requirement. It would look like a, it would be like a normal floor plan pretty much at that point. The only other thing I would say is um, <clears throat> there is no um, secret mm -hmm. because they, they're thinking that it is a two-family house. I don't, uh, you know that that's why there's no secret? I didn't yes, know that. I oh, believe okay. that's what it says in the secret. Mm -hmm. um, now, do the new plans have to go back to the environmental department? It would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I wanted to respond to uh, to the the two doors uh, after the fr the front door. Um, that necessarily doesn't have to be there. Um, it, it right now the way it's set up, there's one door. My mother has this like sliding, you know, uh, pocket door. It's called which separates the top from from the bottom. But that opens up quickly, obviously, and uh, and at the top of the stairs. Uh, there would be a door. I mean, we don't have to have all these doors. This is not a two-family dwelling. I want to make that clear to this board. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's my mother, her son, and my fiance. We're going to get married. You know, she vowed to take care of me in old age, and that's what I'm trying to do here. Okay. I, exactly. So I want her to, I want us to live in the same household independently, but with a sense of closeness. And that, that's, that's all we're trying to do here. Um, as far as the environmental impacts, the family previously was six. My mother, my father, and four kids. My father passed away four years ago. Three of my brothers are married. It's just me and my mother and my fiance. So it's less waste, no contamination, no waste, no extra waste uh, coming out of the house. It's actually less. Um, you know, uh, <coughs> it's, it, it's a tough situation because, uh, you know, the whole universal uh, mother-in-law and daughter-in-law conflict. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get them, t those two, to come together and live in the same household. So that sense of independence has to be there in order for this to work. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do here. I understand it was substantial previously, but this is the first time we're coming here, so we don't know. We propose this, you deny, we go back and forth. That's obviously the way it works. I realize that the balcony in the first... Uh, uh, w was not in character to the neighborhood, it, it, neighborhood and could be detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, I realized that the full extension in the back, uh, I believe it was 11 by 47 and a half feet, is substantial and bulky to the neighborhood. Um, you know, in this, in this revision here, you see that the back kitchen is, is, is just extended, which w is what my mother wants. The front uh, the front room is just a, a, a more of a master be uh, bedroom for her, and and she has plenty of grandkids, and you know there's not enough rooms in the house for to, to for them to sleep sleep there and sleep over on her section, not the top section. Top section obviously, 
you know, is my section. So it, it wouldn't make some sense for them to come upstairs because then there wouldn't be any independence or separation uh, from each other. So right now, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't accommodate her in that sense. So she wants to extend that room. That's why she wanted to do the whole back room. Um, and I know you had an issue with the, the sunroom uh, from, the first, uh, from the first plans um, because it was heated. Now, I don't know. A, a room in a house, I feel, should be heated. My mother feels should be heated. I mean, if we don't have it heated, we wouldn't be able to use it half the year because it would be frigid in that room when you're in that sunroom. You, would want, you want to enjoy that throughout the year, so that's why we installed heat in that room. If you don't need the heat in that room, uh, there's no point to, to that room at all. So we would take that out anyway. So that's why in this revision, we've taken that out because if we're not gonna have heat in that room, why even have that room at all? Um, for, this to, for this to work, uh, four things needed to happen. The first was the restructure of the roof because that's really causing a problem and, and it's just I've repatched it. We've had people come in, architects come in to, to look at it. It's just the joists are not, uh, just are not correct. Something is wrong with the structure of that roof. And again, it, it causes this, saf uh, this safety problem here. Um, that's the first issue. The second issue, my mother wanted the kitchen, which we, we're addressing right here. And the third was uh, the front room. Um, and the fourth was the porch in the front of the house. The neighborhood is evolving. The character of the neighborhood is evolving. Okay, everybody in the neighborhood is starting to uh, build porches or something like a porch, not necessarily fenced in. Um, Three Apple Lane, which I'm going to reference here, which uh, this board was uh, has granted. My mother doesn't want me to mention other properties because she doesn't want to get them in trouble. Enough. But this is on record that this board has uh, approved a 27.14% FAR for that mm -hmm. house. They have a, a porch that's a couple of houses down. So I removed the porch from here to decrease the FAR to accommodate that, but it's not going with the character of the neighborhood. Um, it, it's really... It bothers me that we can't put that in because eventually I'm going to want that. It's, the neighborhood's going to be like that. We're going to be the only ones without a porch in, front, in the front of the house. It, and that's, that's, that's the trend. The reason I know this is because I drive through the back roads. I live in that area. I, that is my community, you know, and I drive to the Pine section. I work in the Hop Hog Industrial Park, and, and th these, this is what I see all the time, everybody has a deck, uh, a porch in front of their house. So unfortunately, that's one of the things that we wanted and we cannot put it in here because the FAR is not allowing us to do this. Now- Can I, can I stop you yeah. for one second? Because sure. the porch, porch doesn't fall under FAR. Yeah, so what if- you, you can have the porch- Well, with an overhang, right? Doesn't no. it, it's- it Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, but you just can't enclose it. You can't put walls on it. You can put a roof over it in columns without sure. accounting toward FAR. That's not, to my understanding, that is included in the FAR, and that's no. why it was removed, so. No. No. Also, the drawing that I have shows a porch. Do a, what? I, no, no, this, this is an old drawing. There's a new no. Oh, a wider porch. Yeah. Well, you we're talking that goes across from, from the new addition to the oh. front room. Mm -hmm. Going across to the uh, to, to the end that that I type just, of I just looked through your your entire um, posting and there's there's nothing in here that that is kicking off a variance for the porch so you know you could apply for the porch even if we <laughs> really? your variance yeah because yeah, I I really don't want to go back and 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 you know re rebuild I want to just build it all at once uh, at one shot and just if I could from my own uh, mind. It appears that you took away the rear sunroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It appears that you took away the porch, which, I mean, to us, it, it really doesn't kick off any variances no. whatsoever. So hmm. it, it doesn't matter to this board. Uh, and, and personally, I kind of like the way houses look with porches on the front anyway. Who doesn't? Um, it appears that you 
modified a little bit of the interior layout and you would drop the square footage from 33 percent to 27.14 yeah 27.14 um, which and is it a would substantial seem to me as well sitting here that the economical way to return us to a single family dwelling is to remove those walls and to just remove the second floor kitchen and yeah. it's a single family dwelling yeah it's it's not yeah. complicated at all it's not to put words in your mouth but that should be it mm -hmm. <laughs> now, how do we proceed? We have to take these plans to building and then to? Well, to DEW. DEW. Yeah. I think just one thing on the FAR that you had brought up to me in the past, is this 27 or 28 percent doesn't include a garage. You might be creating a situation of people coming back saying, now I need a garage. He doesn't have a garage on Correct. This. No, it was converted. It was a garage and it was converted to a dining room. Sometimes what's happened in the past is people would convert a garage to living <laughs> space and then come back to the board five years later and say, I don't have a garage, I need a bigger FAR. Well, I could speak for five years later uh, in the sense that uh, this house is going to stay in my family and this is my house uh, when she's willing to sell it to me. I've tried and she doesn't want to sell it to me uh, <laughs> because she loves the house. Uh, but uh, in the future, I will not want a garage. Um, I have a, a shed, which is on the plans, which is fine enough. I have a nice big garage for a uh, garage, uh, driveway for my car, uh, cars. So uh, in the future, I don't see this. And I don't plan on selling. I love that neighborhood and good luck you know, buying a house in that neighborhood for under $500,000. Right. Um, but I do have uh, one issue uh, with this new addition also as well. Uh, we fixed the porch issue. You're saying that that, that shouldn't compromise the FAR at all. Um, the back door and the deck, the balcony and the, and the back of the house on the original plan was there. We wanted a bigger deck. And there was, there was some concern that this was an entrance, you know, leading to that apartment from the backyard because it, it, it's a door with a, a slight deck and a staircase going downstairs. Um, and it's removed from, the, from, this, from this revision here, which is detrimental to my everyday life. I have a dog. I let, I let that dog out into the backyard from that back door. Now, I never use that as an entrance. If I do have guests and they smoke cigarettes or whatever, whatever the case may be, they can go outside. If they need some fresh air, they can go outside right onto that deck. Um, and, and it provides access to the backyard without compromising her uh, way of life. Again, this whole independence thing. Um, my my, my uh, suggestion, what I want to do is uh, I understand your concern, and I don't, I don't plan on renting this out at all. Uh, this is for me. So it doesn't have to be one of those doors where you have a key entry. It could be a sliding door, uh, you know, a double sliding door where it only locks from the inside, so it wouldn't be considered an entrance at yeah. all. Just an exit to let my dog out, to go outside. And, uh, you know, previously there was a problem with this because uh, it, was, it was... Okay, we have to stop for one minute.